Hello and welcome to the Madhouse everyone, Trudot here and I'm glad to present you guys with a new build for uh, build 29, this is the D Warlock, uh, I've named it Driggs Champion, basically I've been working on this thing uh, ever since build 29 got released, so I don't really want to hold you guys up, let's uh, go straight into the skills. Now in here is pretty much a mess, although I know uh, I know the points that I have spent. Basically we have maxed Driggs Evil Eye, maxed Blood Burst, only one point into Terrifying Gaze. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, maxed Val Eruption, one point Solel's Witch Fire, one point Consecrated Blade, and one point Second Right, one point Doom Bolt. We have maxed Blood of Drig, and also maxed Armor of the Guardian, maxed Vulnerability, and only six points into Curse of Frailty. Uh, let's go into the Arcanist tree. Now, this is basically what you can see right here. We're going to use uh, 12 points into Elemental Balance for the crit damage. Um, and another weird thing that you might see here is uh, the mirror, which is maxed. Now, you can take these uh, 11 points, put at least one point into the mirror since you are going to need that. Uh, but with the rest of 11 points, and you can also get two from Arcane Will, you can spend as you like. I think this is one of uh, the best options to do it. Another one would be to just go for pure mastery, although that is a little bit more definitive, so yeah, if you do that, just make sure that, you know, you cannot take the points off. Right now, I could take the points off uh, of Mirror and put them into something else. So, uh, this is basically the build. It is pretty straightforward, still uh, Driggs Evil Eye. I took Doom Bolt because of the reduction to enemies' health, although this does not affect bosses, so it helps a little bit with uh, the champions that we might find. And let's go into Devotion. Now this is, again, quite a mess in here. I'll go over the choices. Uh, I have maxed Tortoise, I have maxed uh, the Lion. We have the Viper in here, which is pretty good offensive ability and reduced uh, target's elemental resistances for 3 seconds. This is really good for from the Viper. We have Chart of the Dead. Again, this constellation is really, really good. Uh, and going down here, I'm going to leave that... Uh, until the end. We have Hawk, really good one, crit damage and also offensive ability. Empty Throne is really good because it gives us plenty of resistances in here. Manticore is going to be our uh, single offensive uh, devotion choice. Uh, the Manticore tree is pretty good for this build. I have maxed the Oclane's Lantern. Uh, this one I would say it's a uh, really good constellation for this particular build, although it works for uh, other builds as well. It has crit, offensive, total damage, and of course casting speed. We went into the behemoth for uh, giant's blood. So we put one point there, then we got uh, giant's blood, and then another point in here for the 8% health. And then I went up here for uh, skills of Ulkama, which again is really good for defensive capabilities lot of uh, health and energy, but also this would really help. Now, the big problem with this build right now is energy regen. Uh, because we have so many points from gear into, into Driggs if a lie tree, um, our, uh, our spammable ability costs 124 energy, and that's quite a bit with a lot of casting speed. This is why we're going to need a lot of energy. I have one point in here or 10 elemental resistances for one point that is really good and another two points scattered about uh, in the hour for the minus 5% skill energy cost and that was pretty much devotion let's go take a look at our gear alright going into gear I have the full set of Drig. Uh I think this is the best way to go although I'm going to explain to you guys some other uh, variants that you might want to consider we have the rune dagger of Drig, and the problem with this one is that it has insane cunning requirement. It has uh, 426 cunning requirement, but that is going to be reduced by 15%. Uh, we have uh, Vestments of Drig. We've put Chains of Oleron in this. In here we have a Mark of Drig. Uh, Mantle of Drig. Mutated Scales. Now I chose to go with Mutated Scales because uh, I was lacking some health, and I think this is a better way to go. Although you could, uh, you could put uh, Silk Swatch on it as well. We have Hood of Drig with, uh, what is the component in here, a Sanctified Bone, a Sanctified Bone, uh, I'm using it because of the 12% damage to Chthonix, you can replace it with a Runestone as well, it, if you're lacking resistances, but this was not the case 
right here, so Sanctified Bone was the better choice overall. And we have the Black Gem of Drieg with a Focusing Prism. The Focusing Prism is going to be crucial to this build uh, because of the energy problems that we have. Um, we have a Rich Tome of Naradin. Now I chose to go with this one. Uh, I put a Haunted Steel in there for a little bit of uh, energy of uh, attack damage converted to health, which is basically Leech. Uh, another option would be to go with Tome of Arcane Wastes, although I think this one is a little bit better for this particular build. Also, uh, instead of uh, Vestment of Drig, you could give up the 5 set, which gives you 20% casting speed. I don't really recommend that, but if you're missing uh, this particular chest, you can go with uh, the Vestment of the Great Guardian. It's going to work just as well. In fact, this one is, uh, is a better item, I would say, uh, in general, than... Uh, the vestments of Drieg, but yeah, I'm using it for the five uh, for the five piece uh, set. And also, we have a badge of mastery. Now you can get uh, you see that plus three to Drieg's evil eye and plus two to force wave. You can get some better ones, but I just uh, I stick with this because it already has plus three to Drieg's evil eye, and that's good enough for me. We have a word stone in there. Uh, now another Im important pieces are going to be basically uh, the rings and the belt. I have two Incorruptible Imperial Ring of Readiness uh, with Ectoplasms in both of them. As you can see, the Augment as well is oriented for uh, Elemental Resistances and Health. Uh, that goes on both rings as well as um, our Amulet. We have the legs here, Stonehide Exalted Leggings of the Mountain. I actually wanted to get uh, something else than... Uh, I wanted to get Menhir's Wall instead of off the Mountain, but this one, this one works fine. Uh, Stonehide off Menhir's wall is going to be, in fact, a little bit better. I put Silk Swatch in there. Uh, we have Survivalist Exalted Sabatons of Nature's Bounty. Again, not the best roll, but still, uh, we're going to roll with it. Uh, it's pretty good. Mark of Mogdragon in there. We have Empowered Zealot uh, Gauntlets. Now you could switch this up. Of course, Restless Remains in there is our only option. You could switch this up with Viper Fang uh, Grips. This one works just as well, but uh, in fact, the the Empowered Zealot Gauntlets, uh, I think, are a little bit overtuned. Uh, they just work so well and have uh, really good offensive uh, stats. And uh, we're left with the belt, an Imperious Exalted Belt of Potency. Uh, I wanted to get something else as well. I wanted to get an Incorruptible one in here. But uh, the Imperious one works okay. It gives me piercing, which uh, I was uh, was lacking. A uh, little bit of chaos that is from uh, the blacksmith that I crafted with, and I put a dense fur in there. And we have the good old blight. Now you could switch this up with Drieg's affliction. Uh, I don't think the difference is going to be noticeable. The only difference is going to be that you get five percent uh, casting speed, which might be better than that little uh, sixteen percent acid and forty percent poison. It's basically the same thing. If you don't want to craft a legendary one, you can stick with uh, with Blight and it's going to work just as well. Now for attributes, uh, most of them are going into Physique. I have put a little bit into Cunning because I need the Cunning for this uh, dagger in here, which has ridiculous Cunning requirements. And I have put a little bit into Spirit as well because our Tome here requires 715 Spirit. So you will want to take that into consideration. I also have five available points. In case I switch a piece out, uh, especially the Badge of Mastery, that gives me minus 15 cunning requirement for melee weapons and physique as well. This is really, really crucial to this build and the Badge of Mastery is really, really good. Just get it. It's really good, you can craft it. It's, it's absolutely perfect. Or uh, I would say pretty much everything. Now offensive ability is a little bit low, uh, but I I can't really make it a lot higher without really crippling my defensive capabilities. Uh, but damage per second is still pretty good. As you can see, the resistances here are uh, quite good as well. Another variant for uh, the boots as well. You could go with uh, Worm Scale Foot Guards. It's not, it's not that much of a difference, but I really wanted the health. So uh, that's basically it. We went over the build as well. Now let's see this guy in action. Alright guys. I just did Bastion of Chaos and it took a really long time so I decided to split this video in two. Uh, you can uh, check the video fight uh, of Bastion of Chaos and basically everything uh, right up there. So check that out. And uh, this is going to be just the explanation for this video. Uh, I thank you for watching. Definitely check that, uh, that video fight and I shall see you all next time.